In the heart of Paris, Sam reluctantly attends a party hosted by his ex-girlfriend, driven by a singular purpose, to reclaim his old tapes. Despite the lively atmosphere, Sam remains disinterested in the festivities, yearning only for the retrieval of his belongings. His ex, caught up with guests, requests his patience, leaving Sam to sit awkwardly, feeling out of place. Growing weary of the wait, Sam implores his ex to reveal the location of his possessions, declaring his intent to retrieve them himself. Guided to an office, he is instructed to wait for a future discussion. Undeterred by the inebriated revelers in the corridor, Sam locks himself in the office to search for tranquility. However, as he locates his belongings, an unexpected nosebleed interrupts the task. Armed with tissues, he settles down to rest, eventually succumbing to sleep. Unaware of the chaos unfolding outside, Sam remains oblivious to the shouts and commotion. Awakening the next morning, he gathers his belongings, only to open the door and be confronted with a horrifying scene, a disarrayed apartment drenched in blood. A chance object in hand for protection, Sam investigates further, revealing that the once celebratory crowd has transformed into zombies. Fending off the undead, Sam barricades himself inside. Peering through the window, he discovers the grim reality of zombified hordes wreaking havoc on the streets of Paris. Armed with the abandoned belongings of partygoers, he listens to their final messages, painting a bleak picture of the world outside. When the corridor falls silent, Sam ventures to the rooftop, finding no signs of life or aid. Determined to survive, he initiates a cleanup, meticulously ridding the rooms of infected blood. A mysterious noise from the floor below catches his attention, followed by a gunshot that punctures the ceiling. Investigating, Sam peers through the hole to find the neighbor's tragic fate. Armed with a metal bar, he enlarges the opening, preparing to face the apocalyptic reality that has befallen the City of Lights. Having covered the old man with a blanket, Sam turns his attention to the other lifeless figure in the room. A chilling revelation unfolds as he realizes that the initial sound was the man shooting his infected wife, unable to bear the burden any longer. Determined to face the grim reality, Sam forages the kitchen for sustenance, seizes the man's weapon, and stockpiles every available bullet. Ensuring the corridor is free of the undead, Sam cautiously emerges, descending the stairs while sealing every door in his path against the encroaching zombie menace. Reaching the front entrance, he encounters a throng of zombies outside, hastily shutting the door just in time to evade their grasp. With the building secured, Sam heads to the caretaker's room, deftly collecting keys to all the apartments despite the persistent attempts of a zombie reaching through the window. A can of tuna becomes a quick meal, and he gathers supplies and useful items, meticulously organizing apartment keys for systematic exploration. The first apartment he enters presents a terrifying encounter with a zombified family. In a fierce struggle, Sam manages to repel the assailant, promptly marking the door with an X to prevent future entry. Continuing the systematic search, subsequent apartments prove mercifully vacant. Sam collects food and eclectic items, including a paintball gun, an MP3 player, old cassettes, and even a set of drums, eliciting joy as a musician. Concluding his apartment checks and donning a protective mask, Sam is startled by the sudden movement of an elevator, revealing a non-aggressive zombie within. Opting against violence, he secures the creature with a belt, preventing its escape. In the evening, Sam enjoys a meal while immersing himself in the nostalgia of his old tapes, evoking fond memories. The following day, Sam observes the zombies outside before meticulously rationing and organizing his gathered food, maintaining a record in a notebook. Using dirt on a window, he creates a grid to mark the passage of days. As the solitude wears on, Sam explores the apartment further, finding solace in playing the drums to release pent-up tension in the face of an uncertain and perilous existence. In the hushed corridors of his makeshift fortress, Sam navigates the delicate balance between activity and stealth, wary that noise attracts the ever-present threat of zombies to his windows. Days blend into a lonely routine, with Sam marking the passage of time on the window, cooking meals, and seeking solace on the roof during the quiet night hours, gazing upon the desolate city below. To combat the monotony, Sam engages in creative endeavors, wielding a paintball gun to turn the undead into targets in his ex's pictures. He records the sounds of his solitude, fashioning them into music using random objects. The routine offers a semblance of normalcy in the abnormal world outside his sanctuary. One day, an unpleasant odor alerts Sam to the grim reality that the bodies below are decaying. Moved by a somber respect, he places the deceased in sleeping bags along with their cherished belongings, leaving them on the bed. 
After a moment of reflection, he seals the room to contain the stench, maintaining a semblance of dignity in their passing. The daily routine persists, but a surreal turn of events unfolds as the water supply abruptly ceases. Nightmares punctuate Sam's restless sleep, vividly portraying zombie hordes invading his room. A painful scream wakes him, only to realize it was a figment of his imagination. Undeterred, Sam incorporates exercise into his routine, jogging around the building while immersed in music. At the elevator, he breaks the isolation by symbolically shaking the hand of an imaginary companion, playfully naming him Alfred. Finally, rain graces the deserted city, and Sam seizes the opportunity to collect water, using an array of pots and containers for his makeshift shower. Reflecting by the elevator, he shares a solitary moment with his newfound friend, Alfred, confessing the torment of not knowing the fate of his family. In the echoes of a one-sided conversation, Sam finds a strange comfort in the companionship he has conjured amidst the chaos. In a rare moment of distraction from his daily routine, Sam, armed with a paintball gun, is captivated by the sight of a cat on the desolate streets below. Moved by a sudden surge of emotion, he descends the stairs cautiously, ensuring the absence of zombies before extending an offering of tuna to the wary feline, taking refuge under a nearby car. The cat, torn between hunger and fear, cautiously approaches, only to be startled away by an unforeseen noise. Concerned for the elusive feline, Sam abandons his weapon, leaving the door ajar, and embarks on a stealthy pursuit. Concealed behind cars, his efforts are thwarted when a vigilant zombie detects his presence. Swiftly seeking refuge inside a vehicle, Sam dispatches the first zombie through the window, only to realize another undead threat closing in. A nimble escape through the backseat and a swift return to the safety of the building narrowly avert the impending danger. Back in the sanctuary of his apartment, Sam peers out the window to find the cat casually coexisting with the zombies. Frustrated by the feline's apparent indifference, he aims and shoots it. A sudden realization strikes as he turns around to spot blood on the floor, his leg had been wounded during the encounter. After tending to the wound, a contemplative Sam faces his reflection in a mirror, armed with a paintball gun. Uncertain of infection, he positions the weapon for a drastic measure if needed. In a quiet vigil, Sam sits with the weight of uncertainty, eventually succumbing to sleep. The momentary lapse results in the weapon discharging a bullet, startling him awake. Relief washes over as he discovers no signs of transformation, prompting a joyous laughter. In the solitude of his post-apocalyptic haven, Sam tends to his plants when an unusual noise interrupts the silence. Shouting into the void yields no response. Peering through the window, he spots a distant figure in the building across the street, but the uncertainty of their nature, zombie or survivor, leaves Sam perplexed. Seeking a clearer view from the roof reveals a chilling emptiness, devoid of signs of life. As the cold creeps in, Sam, longing for warmth and comfort, constructs a makeshift pillow fort and kindles a fire for a simple pleasure, an inviting bath. Amid attempts at relaxation, mysterious sounds echo through the stillness, elusive and fleeting. Concerns about dwindling food supplies linger, prompting Sam to contemplate venturing outside for provisions. Yet, his imagination proves more daunting than the undead reality, and he remains confined within the familiar walls. Loneliness seeps into Sam's existence, pushing him to the bottle one afternoon. In a drunken rant directed at his imaginary companion, Alfred, Sam inadvertently incites a fervent reaction, prompting him to retreat to the comforting beat of his drums. The resounding noise attracts the attention of the undead, clawing at the window in their futile attempts to reach him. Subsequently, Sam apologizes to the imaginary Alfred for the chaos. Later, amidst rationing the meager food supply and revisiting the echoes of his family's voices on old tapes, Sam succumbs to grief. Overwhelmed, he sweeps items off the table. The evening brings an abrupt awakening to another noise, leading Sam to impulsively shoot at the source, a door. His relief is replaced by devastation upon discovering he shot a living woman, not a zombie. Urgently attending to her wounds, Sam tends to the stranger, named Sarah, whom he unknowingly saved. In the aftermath, Sam, haunted by guilt, learns more about Sarah's survival tactics. She navigates the desolate cityscape by leaping between buildings using her makeshift hook. Sharing her experiences, she reveals the distressing truth. Most survivors have succumbed to madness. As the somber days unfold in their precarious sanctuary, Sarah, a survivor adept at navigating the city's heights, remains skeptical of staying in one place for too long. Despite Sam's assurances of safety in their current building, Sarah's wariness persists. 
driven by the knowledge that the gunshot from the previous night has drawn unwanted attention from the undead. She anticipates the relentless pursuit of zombies, predicting the imminent breach of their haven. In an attempt to maintain a semblance of normalcy, Sam invites Sarah on his daily walk through the building. The sight of Alfred, the imagined companion, startles her, but Sam reassures her of their safety. Resuming his musical endeavors, Sam finds solace in Sarah's unexpected collaboration. Evening conversations with the imaginary Alfred lead Sam to ponder the prospect of enduring the apocalypse with a real companion. As the food supply dwindles, Sam confronts the harsh reality and takes drastic measures to secure provisions. Cutting a hole in the door marked with an X, he strategically eliminates the zombies inside. With the path cleared, he gathers supplies, only to return to his apartment and discover Sarah's absence. Frantically searching, he finds her on the roof, expressing a desire to leave and practicing dangerous jumps between buildings. Disagreeing with the perilous plan, Sam and Sarah clash over their options. However, a shocking revelation unfolds as Sam's realization sets in, Sarah was never real. The vivid hallucination of her presence unravels, leaving Sam in a heart-wrenching moment of grief. Entering the room, he finds her lifeless body, tenderly covering her with a sheet and offering a poignant goodbye with candles. In a final act of connection, Sam explores Sarah's bag, discovering a digital camera. Through tearful eyes, he navigates through the captured memories, a bittersweet journey through the illusion of companionship and the harshness of a world defined by loss. Among the pictures in Sarah's bag, he stumbles upon an image of himself on the roof, a confirmation that Sarah had been an apparition in the neighboring building. As the flames dance, consuming the remnants of Sam's memories captured on old tapes, he confronts the unsettling truth. Accepting the descent into madness, Sam resolves to leave. Setting ablaze the relics of his past, Sam seizes Sarah's bag, intent on escaping. A compassionate moment interrupts his departure as he frees Alfred, the imagined companion. Alfred, benign in his spectral form, follows Sam as he maneuvers through the building. In a bid to buy time, Sam redirects Alfred into an apartment. However, chaos ensues as the burning tapes trigger the fire alarm, summoning the relentless undead. The front door succumbs to the assault and the zombies surge towards Sam. Fending them off with gunfire, he eventually succumbs, opting to evade rather than confront. Seizing the opportunity, Sam rushes into the freed elevator, scaling the shaft to an empty apartment, closely pursued by a relentless zombie. A tense struggle unfolds as Sam uses makeshift tactics to incapacitate the pursuing zombie, creating a temporary barrier with a couch. Reclaiming his apartment, now shrouded in smoke, Sam moves undetected among the undead. Finally reaching the roof, he uses Sarah's hook to cast a rope toward the adjacent building. In a desperate leap, he propels himself across, colliding with the wall. After a brief respite, Sam opens his eyes, grateful to have escaped the grasp of the undead. Confronted by a solitary zombie peering through the window, he chooses the security of the rooftop, where he surveys the city skyline. Far-off sounds spark hope in Sam's heart, as he longs for the chance to cross paths with fellow survivors in this barren panorama. The glimmers of sanity persist in the shadows as Sam ponders the unpredictable future lying beyond the silent horizon of the city.